subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon for all notifications. سوانے عمری تھی اس کی بائیوروفی تھی اور ان کے شائدی کا ترجمہ تھا عمری تھی تو غالب شناسی کا ایک حصہ ہے کہ میں پہن جی کو غالب کی نسبت سے جانتا تھا اور یہ کہ جو غالب کے واقفکار ہیں ان سے ملنے کی تمنا رہتی ہے اور اس زمانے میں آپ شاید آئی سی سی آر میں ڈائریکٹر تھے وہ انڈین کلچر ایک سسائیٹی میں گئے اس وقت انہوں نے انگریزی میں لکھی ہوئی سونٹس کی فارم میں لکھی ہوئی یدشتر اور دروب جی پر ایک بہت لمبی نظم سوائی اور it reminded me of paradise loss یہ اتنی ہی مشکل ہے انگریزی میں جتنی میں منٹر لکھتے ہیں اور اسی طرح کی مداز تھا لیکن that's the time when I heard his poetry and مجھے یاد ہے میں وہ بھولا نہیں وہ کچھ دو سونٹس جو ان کا جو کانفلٹ ہے جو دشنر کا دروپتی کا اس کے بارے میں کس طرح سے لکھا تھا انہیں اور پھر بہت دن کے بعد ان میں موقع ملا میں نے وہ پوری کتاب اردو ورس میں ٹرانسلیٹ کی ترجمہ کیا اور پیش کیا میں کتاب And that song, I know him only through books and many a books which he has written. And I think that he is a writer and a very prolific writer. He is writing and he is writing and he is writing and he is writing. 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 اور کیا کچھ نہیں کیا اور اس بیچ میں اس کے باوجود وہ کتابیں لکھتے رہتے ہیں کچھ جونئر اور دوشاروں کا ترجمہ بھی کرتے ہیں انگریزی میں اس حال میں اب ایک ہندوستان کی ایک سوشل کنڈیشن جو بدلتی رہتی ہے جو بدلتی چلی آ رہی ہے اس پر وہ نبز پکڑے رہنا اور اس پر لکھنا اور اس پر ذکر کرنا وہ دو تین کتابیں جو میں ایک The Great Indian Middle Class Being Indian and Becoming Indian are remarkable books and he has been contributing in preserving and explaining the Indian culture چار اشاریہ چھے فور دیسمل سکس چار اشاریہ چھے برس تو گزر چکے ہیں تم نے کتنی دیر لگا دی آنے میں اور آ کر کس مذہب اور ذات پات کے پھیر میں پڑی ہو چلو چلیں بس تین ہی بلین سال بچے ہیں بہت بہت شکریہ the original and the translation next to each other. So that's something to look out for. <coughs> Incidentally, power is, uh, again, his uh, CV was too long for this thing to, it have taken the whole evening. But before we begin talking about the subject today, I want to know, <coughs> how the hell do you manage to pack in so much in a day? You know, this man has been an ambassador, he's been a civil servant, he's been uh, a writer, a poet, a political advisor, cultural czar. Should I stop there? <laughs> so, a renaissance man. And it's wonderful that uh, you've managed to do so much. And perhaps you should tell us the secret of time management later. <laughs> The first question that one asks when you get this book is why? 
why would you write it now? Uh, because I, I associate you with more, not material exactly, but more things of the earth rather than of the spirit. Therefore, it came as a surprise. Well, if anybody were to make an analysis of trying to find a single theme in the books I've written, it would take a considerable so, <laughs> That's what I was saying. <laughs> when I wrote on Krishna, then I wrote on the great Indian middle class, being Indian, becoming Indian, Chanakya ever. I wrote the only novel I wrote is being made into a Bollywood film. It's called When Loss is Gain. I've translated Buldar Sahab, Kefi Azmi, Atubiyari Vajpayee. Uh, I've written a book on the Kama Sutra also. <laughs> uh, so there have been many books. And I think essentially there is a search to try and understand different aspects to which, of which we are limited as Indians, not necessarily as Hindus only, because my subjects deal with India as a whole and what is happening in India, at least my contemporary books. And you will be surprised, I mean, even Dalek was written from the point of view of understanding his times as much as understanding his poetry. So in that space, this book, or rather Adi Shankaracharya fascinated fascinated me for two or three reasons, which I was mentioning earlier this evening. Firstly, his life itself. A man born in the 8th century in Kerala, in Kaladi, who takes Samadhi in Kedan and travels the length and breadth of this land by foot, not once but twice. And in the scope of that very short life of only 32 years, sets up the four muts or monasteries, which draw up the civilizational map of India as it was, and it remains today. Shingeri in the south, Dwarka in the west, Puri in the east, and Joshimut in the north. He even goes to Srinagar. He goes to Srinagar and writes copiously. <coughs> the third was, as you go into Advait, the Vedantic school of thought, and it's not the only school of thought in India. That in itself was a discovery which I'd like to talk about. But if you go into the Vedantic school of thought, the sheer compressed cerebral energy in trying to understand who we are and what is this world about. It's a question all of us in moments of reflection or when we pause from the avalanche of municipal concerns that rule our life, uh, when we pause or think it's a question that confronts us. Why? To what avail? To what goal? To what purpose? To what end? Is there anything beyond the contingent, the immediate, the qualified, the conditioned? Or is there something more? And what is fascinating is that in large parts of Hindu philosophy, we are not Srishti Chintaks. They are not examining the empirical world. Adi Shankaracharya and many others were Paramarthic Chintaks. Their concern was not with God, their concern was what, what could possibly be the ultimate truth. What could be the absolute reality? And what is our place in it? That is why I often say that of the six systems of Hindu philosophy, five are technically atheist. They are not talking about Ishwar. 
they are talking about once again the paramarth chintak's great thinking so there was this philosophy and lastly and if i may just answer your question as i say often on tv debate in 30 second more <laughs> lastly i felt there is a need today there is a need today for hindus as they face a new form of aggression in the religion as they face self appointed evangelists who say this alone is hindu <laughs> it is important for them to understand to explain to them the profundity of thought that underpins this world the sheer size of the canvas that defines the the the, the power of original thought monic soch that underpins it the dialogic nature of this religion its eclecticism its inclusiveness its ability to debate called shastra it's important to understand all this and i thought the best template to do that was to go to one of its greatest minds adishan